In 2008, the National Centers for Telehealth and Technology, one of the Defense Centers of Excellence for Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury, was established to meet the needs of our beneficiary population. Our focus is on the Department of Defense beneficiaries. That's roughly 9.7 million individuals, active duty, family members, retirees. Our challenge is to reach to them where they are, when they need care, and provide them what they really need and want. In the short time that, that T2 has been in existence, we've seen the rapid development of the opportunities to leverage mobile solutions to really reach our patient population. Mobile health is allowing patients to get to content they need anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Mobile health will fundamentally alter the transaction between patients and providers. Patients can take an assessment on a smartphone and send the results of that assessment to their provider. This gets the patient integrated into their treatment. Providers will get accurate, real-time data rather than anecdotal data. Mobile health works with our population because the military community is tech savvy. In fact, since we began developing apps, launching them over three years ago, we have seen over 500,000 downloads of our applications. T2 is reaching out on a global scale to put mobile health into day-to-day -day care. We are creating a foundation that will allow individuals to connect to a larger system. The leadership of the Department of Defense identified the value of leveraging technologies as solutions to meet the needs of our beneficiary population. And it was through those opportunities that we moved forward rapidly to address those needs, looking at solutions that we could bring to the individual that they were comfortable with from their daily lives, and leveraging those technologies to help address their health needs. In developing a telehealth strategy for the Department of Defense, T2 sees four areas of major concern. First, connectivity. DOD has a global healthcare system, and so job number one for us is to ensure that we can connect resources from wherever they are to wherever they're needed, no matter how remote, no matter how distant the person who needs that service. Secondly, collaboration. Instead of having the patient go to the specialist, have the specialist actually come in to the primary care setting by a virtual technology, provide care to the patient, and coordinate in real time with the other members of the patient's health care team. We need to make sure that care resources, that health information is available continuously. Now we have beneficiaries who have these digital devices that they carry on their person. And so we can bring healthcare information, we can bring healthcare resources, we can bring communication with the healthcare team to the personal level. Finally, we need to address the issue of competence. In order for telehealth to be a truly effective component of the DOD's healthcare system, we need to have a workforce that is comfortable with and competent in the use of telehealth technologies. When I started in psychology, we didn't even dream of the kinds of tools that technology makes possible today. But it's here today, and I'm convinced, I'm certain, that it's going to make a real difference in terms of therapeutic outcomes. The challenge is to get used to using those tools and to integrate them into your clinical practice. If you are already thinking about that, starting to do that, or if you're all the way there, you are now delivering to your clients, to your patients, the quality of care that is going to become the standard of care out into the future. As we're looking forward to solutions, we're looking at how we can deliver personalized, customized care through an electronic means. We're doing a number of things in the virtual world environment. In the virtual world, you have the opportunity for individuals to go in as avatars and interact with other people. And so a care provider can meet privately in a virtual consultation room with a patient and provide information or health care. One of the opportunities in avatar to avatar healthcare is the opportunity of some measure of confidentiality or privacy. An individual may be willing to go in through their computer and interact with a healthcare provider around topics that they may feel too ashamed or too uncomfortable with to talk to somebody face to face. Another opportunity afforded by the virtual world is an artificially intelligent interactive virtual agent or a virtual coach 
that can work with an individual to provide information about planning for and encouragement in making the kinds of healthcare choices or behavior changes that they may want to make. Technology is evolving rapidly and it's important that we keep pace with that technology evolution in order to provide relevant kinds of solutions for our users. Individuals who are looking for information about healthcare don't want to browse an old-fashioned website. They want an interactive opportunity where they learn as they interact and they want it to be relevant to them. As we look at the technologies that we've been able to deliver and those technologies that we know are available, we can see the opportunity for dramatic changes in our healthcare system. And it's those changes that we're really looking to move forward with. Redesigning the rules and regulations that currently hold us back to enable a healthcare system customized to meet the needs of our patients.